Arthur Gook was a famous missionary to the island country of Iceland at the beginning of the 1900s. And he wrote a series of excellent little books called Can a Young Man Trust? And uh, Can a Young Man Trust His Bible? And Can a Young Man Trust His God? And there are some wonderful stories in those little books, and I'm going to tell a few of them. Today I'd like to tell one based on the words of Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 through 33, where we read, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. This story revolves around a poor fisherman from the village of Hofsos, sitting on the edge of a cliff overlooking the great Skaga Fjord, one of the largest fjords in Iceland. His name was Erik, and Erik lived there on the coast. He was a poor man and only had a rowboat when others had motorboats. He had a wife and four children. They eked out a living. Well, he became very sick. He was hemorrhaging badly and had gone to various doctors and his purse kept getting lighter like the woman in the story of Jesus healing the woman with the issue of blood. Yet he grew no better. And finally, when he was visiting in the city where Brother Gook lived, uh, someone said, why don't you go to the English missionary? At least it won't cost you anything because he does it all for free. And so he made his way over and, and with a great deal of prayer, Arthur Gook gave him some medicine, thought it might help him, and gave him some gospel literature. Well, it wasn't too long until Brother Gook received a letter from this man, ecstatic, that not only had he been physically healed, but he'd been saved as well. And he said now that his, his body was strong again, he wanted to use it for the Lord. And he began to tramp even through the deep snow. He'd go from village to village, from house to house, until the whole region around the, the uh, Skaga Ford had received gospel literature. And yet during this time, there was a growing animosity toward him. He was a godly man, no longer cursing and blaspheming like the others, and they held it against him because he was a standard of judgment against them. And after a long period of poor fishing, uh, finally uh, they found out that the fjord was teeming with codfish. The problem was that they used herring as bait, and there was no herring to be had. And then news came to them that at the next port, a ship had come in, a trawler had come in, loaded with herring. And so they banded together and they rented a motorboat and they put together their funds and sent off to buy as much herring as they could. But they never told Eric. And so when the boat finally came in, uh, they took their quantities of herring and began to fish and... Uh, you know, Eric was very downcast about it all and wondering if the Lord was really caring for him and went into his little shed and began to cry out to God. And this verse came to his mind, For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. He thought to himself, Maybe I should go down and check my net. They would have little nets along the shore, to catch the herring, but there had been no herring in the, in the fjord for a long time. As he made his way down, some of the other fishermen saw him heading toward his net and uh, perhaps thinking that what they would do would be to abscond with any herring they found in his net, they thought they better go and check their own nets as well. And they pulled them up one at a time, no herring, no herring, no herring until they came to Eric's. Eric's rather battered old net seemed to have caught a snag on the bottom. They could hardly pull it up when finally when it broke the surface, it was chock full of herring. 
so many herring, in fact, that Eric went to the other poor fishermen who hadn't been able to purchase fish from the, the nearby trawler, and he shared his herring with them. You know, it's just another reminder. These men had gone and they'd paid to rent a boat and then they'd paid top dollar to buy the herring. But God somehow had turned those little fish away from the other nets until they all gathered in Eric's net. God is no man's debtor. And when we seek first the kingdom of God in his righteousness, God seeks for our good. He looks after his own. And so Eric discovered this. May the Lord encourage our hearts when we start to feel anxious and wonder how things are going and why it is, uh, as the psalmist said, that the wicked seem to do very well and the Christians struggle. Remember, he went into the sanctuary and saw their end and realized that it's not how things do now. It's not time that tells. It's eternity that will tell and God will care for his own.